Come on, come on, come on. How you want it? Call Yak the Patron. Brunch with the boys, we gon' get you what you want. And what you don't know, we about to put you on. Come on, come on, come on. How you want it? Call Yak the Patron. Brunch with the boys, we gon' get you what you want. And what you don't know, we about to put you on. Yes, we are the trending topic. Free relationship profits. Brunch with the boys, we the highest. Brunch with the boys, we the highest. What's going on? It's your boy King Des here. Another episode of Brunch with the Boys. I'm happy to be here this evening. Gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? Jeezy, what's good, everybody? We here. Hey, it's Mr. Jen out here. Yes, sir. Everybody doing good? I, I had COVID, the vid. Over trying to kill a nigga. Yeah, I had the vid too, bro. Yeah, Boy, I got it too. Running through the Lee family strong, I see. Well, Dog, it's these for, the, for the rest of us, they've already fought it off. How you guys doing out there tonight? You know I'm about I mean? to say, nigga, didn't you have it too, nigga? <laughs> I'm one of the first ones. My body said, come on, I'm going to invite you in. We're going to get it through it, and then we then we solid. You know what I mean? So, oh, man. I'm it's these, a lot damn, of girls it's these damn kids like that, that are outbreak monkeys, dog. I'm telling you, they go to school and they bring it back. Hey man, I'm so happy to be back, man. It's been it's been a minute, man. So I'm happy to be able to get yeah. some content to the listeners and and chop it up with the fellas. What are we get into tonight? So we want to talk about, you know, we we always kind of gauge towards helping the ladies, uh, but we want to really hold ourselves accountable, you know, as men. So we want to talk about the the habits that if a man possesses these, you definitely don't want to marry that nigga, ladies. You definitely don't want to marry that nigga. I think a lot of y'all so happy to just have. A husband, you don't care what that nigga is as long as he's yours. That you overlook a lot of important things, and then once you get married, you end up regretting it, cheating on him, you know, being a whore, end up leaving him, and now you're single for the rest of your life when you made a bad decision early in the game. So we're gonna hopefully put you up on game so you can see these things and really decide early if you're gonna deal with it, and if so, then don't complain, hope. All right. Now what it is. So the first one we want to get into, the first bad habit is complacency. A man who is complacent will always disappoint you. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hey, I'm Jason the Bearded Barber, and I'm here to talk to you about my all-natural beard oil and beard. I created this to stimulate hair growth and to moisturize your hair. I mean, this is everything you're going to want. This is black Jamaican castor oil. This is jojoba oil. It's vitamin E that's in it, so it's gonna it's gonna do wonders for your skin for sure. I created these essential oils here, so it's gonna have a citrus smell to it. Main reasons why you would want to get this product from me is because it's one of the most affordable ones. A lot of times you see on the market, they're pretty pricey. Treatment done. The bearded barber's oil and the balm. Shit is the truth, yo. Better get right or get left, bitch. All my brunchies interested in this product, check our store out at brunchwiththeboys.com. Now, you have to determine what it is that you want out of life or, or your expectations. Some people value money more. Some people value time with the family more, things of that nature. Some people just value creating family and, and they don't necessarily care about traveling, but just being able to enjoy day-to-day -day life. So find someone who's on the same you know, shares the same mindset, has the same goals, but at the same time, you want to make sure that they're not complacent and not totally happy with the bare minimum. You know, you want someone who wants to make sure that you're good. I don't know if you can really possess security if you have complacency. It's, a, it's not about a lack of choice with complacent people. I think it's about you get what you are. You attract what you are. That's at any level, right? I think if you yourself, because here's the thing, if you are a if you are a high achieving, ambitious person, the chances are that a complacent person won't be particularly attractive to you. And if you are that complacent person, then that highly ambitious person, the chances are they're not going to be attracted to you. So typically what happens is you get two lazy people together. Um, you know, I, I do think that people can become lazy, right? If they become, to your point, complacent, right? They've achieved a goal that initially was there when a relationship started. And now during the course of that relationship, the goal has been achieved. And so that 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 dangling carrot in front is no longer there. Um, I think that happens sometimes, but I think we can get past it, right? I think you can get past it if you're communicating and you're uh, and you're talking like you should be. I think complacency was 
absolutely okay for a long period of time. You think back 30, 40, 50s, 60s, someone to be on their job 30 years was the thing to do. They didn't have to make a substantial amount of money. They didn't have to make, but what they had to do was be consistent on the job all the way to enough to get pension, to take care of their family. The significant other on the other side was happy with that, right? I feel like as as the generation, as the decades have passed and our current our current generation, they wouldn't be fine with someone being on on a job 30 years making $40,000 a year. The mindset has changed. This is much more of a materialistic, goal-oriented, achievement-driven society, right, than it was then. So if, if we're talking about the day, complacency just doesn't work. But we were talking about back in the day, man, they, look, they were looking for a stable, consistent person. Consistency, yeah. Let me tag one step before we move on. I think I disagree with that. People, right, who kind of fall into those categories, but generationally, I think it's the opposite. Previous generations were much more ambitious and were much more geared towards achieving some goal that was perceived socially as, as desirable, right? Whether it's making a lot of money or getting a, a lot of degrees or having a big house, whatever that is. And then I think people nowadays, particularly this newer generation, maybe the last two, um, oh, yeah. I don't, I, I disagree completely. I think these kids are cool working around the world with a laptop and a, and a suitcase full of clothes at some coffee shops and little hostels and shit across the world, because at the end of the day, they recognize what we all fail to recognize in previous generations is life ain't about a nine to five. Life is about making yeah. memories and about experiences. And, and they have been, they have grown with that ideology and that freedom. So that is freedom. I think we know that now, you know, everybody is on this, on this, we know this, but now we're so programmed into the game, it's hard to break away completely. They never was, they was, they was all, it was born out the matrix, right? Yeah. We got free. They were born out the matrix. And so for yeah. them, it's so easy. We've made it possible for them too, to, to live that way. That's why a lot of the millennials, they actually are okay with living at home. They're not moving out until they're getting married because yeah. they're totally fine with just enjoying and living life. And because our generation works so hard, and generations before to make it, we've provided such a good life to where they don't have to focus on making it. They're good. They can just enjoy. But isn't that really the definition the of difference. like not being complacent? They they're do, they're doing what they want to do when they want to do it, how they want to do it. Um, you know, they're they're continuing to break barriers in regards to how they get things accomplished. FOMO was created literally in this generation, and that fear of missing out, like. It's a generation of movement a little bit more back in the day. Yeah, we were more there were probably more achievement driven. But the reality was the barometer of whether you were successful is the level of stability, how long you were in one place more than it is now. So, I mean, I see both sides of it, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, and I think we're I think we're conflated two veins, right? Because I think so. I would say the answer to the question is depending on what you're talking about. Yeah. If we're talking about professionally, then no. I think kids nowadays are super complacent, right? They're fine not making a bunch of money or achieving what typically or traditionally society has said is important for you to achieve from a professional standpoint. If we're talking about socially, then yes, Jen, I would agree with you. They're more apt to get up and pack up and go live somewhere else or go work here or go do this, go have this experience without the fear of thinking, oh, crap, am I not starting my career early enough? But I also think, too, that depends on how you're brought up, too. I know we're talking generalities because- Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I know time. And, and, and I think there's a stage in life you reach where it's OK to be complacent. Mm -hmm. I think when we're speaking about complacency, we're speaking more from a young person's or in this case, a young man's perspective. You don't want to, you, you can't get with no 23 year old nigga and this nigga. OK, working at McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? You want him to aspire to more. So if we're talking about a middle management guy who's been working at his company for 25 years and that nigga says, no, bitch, I'm not going to go uh, go back to school and get another degree and try to take it to another. I'm happy where I'm at. It, yeah. That nigga to me is not complacent. He's earned and worked towards that goal. So and I, I think, think we need to reference. That's a good point. Rank. That's a good point. But I think the other piece that we're, we're missing the whole other side of it. So complacency, not only financially, people look down on complacency as, as a segment of growth, dog. Bitch, am I growing? Am I evolving? Am I turning into the next 
version of myself, whether it's spiritually, whether it's physically. You know, we've seen a lot of TikToks on on body transformations. You know what I'm saying? Where they, you know, they they were they were 300 pounds and all of a sudden now they got they got the right music in the background and you done seen I don't, I don't like those. I like the ones when they got little booties and then they work hard and now they And then they got a bigger ass. booty. I mean, it's still a little booty but toned. Yeah. I see what you're saying. But think about all that. So no, this, So you talking about really physically awesome. and physically is a big one. So you wouldn't be fine how many times have we had discussions in cigar lounges, just chilling, drinking, where, you know, we, we've talked about people who've gotten complacent even physically and just say, dang, so they're just going to be comfortable like that, huh? And it drives us insane. Be That's complacency as but well. But you can, you can be complacent when you've obtained a certain goal, when you've reached a certain, you know, I'm saying peak where you're okay. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, who, who's a nigga in shape? Michael B. Jordan. If that nigga said, I'm not going to work out for the next six months, bitch, that's not complacency. What, how, what other level can you take it to? I'm just saying, I, I think we only start speaking in that regard when someone is failing. I think we have a problem or we bring comp- complacency up when someone's underachieving. But if you're already at a good range, you talked about 40,000. Maybe that's a little low. But if you got a man and that nigga's making 60, 65,000, you're not going to tell me you're living uh, 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 below the poverty line. So if that nigga said at 65, I'm straight ho. And if you want a nigga to go make a hundred and, and working more, go get that nigga. But I'm fine. There's, there are a, a, a huge percentage of women who would be happy with that nigga at 65. You know what I mean? Because her priorities aren't, are in order. You know I mean? I guess that's debatable on whether they are or aren't. I think it's a thin line between complacency and achievement. There's something to be said for saying, I want to get here, right? Is a, is a ED doctor, complacent because he didn't go do another two years of residency to become a surgeon right yeah. like the, he's not complacent yeah. his goal was to become an ed doctor and so he's an ed doctor but and i also think too listen here's the end day and there's no there's no sugarcoat this money is fucking important it doesn't have to mean yeah. a person thinks it's important for it to be important money is important because you can't do shit without it you can't buy you, you can't live without it. without it so and the more money you have the easier it makes to do things that you want to do that said you can also have an individual that says it's not that important to me, but I understand the importance in the society in which I live and how much money somebody needs to have and be happy. And that's the trick. Like I'm picking back on what Jesus said, but it's not to me. It's not about a number. I can tell you the amount of money that I make. And we're getting off because we do this, but we're going to bring it back. The amount of money I make right now is good. It's great. Actually, it's great. And I have kids and a house and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. If it was just me, I could make I could live very comfortably off a third of what I made and be very happy and live a good life. And it wouldn't mean I'm lazy or anything like that. I would simply say I don't need the excess. So I think, you know, when it comes to money, man, find a person that's able to contribute to a lifestyle that you want to have, whatever that lifestyle yeah, may be. I like Everybody that. don't need a yeah. Corvette. Everybody don't want yeah. a, a nineteen thousand dollar Honda. Find your lifestyle and find a person that can help you contribute to maintaining whatever that is. And there's be no happy. nineteen thousand dollar Honda. Is this a used Honda? It ain't new. No, My Honda. Is, is you can get a hundred pretty cheap. Used Hondas, Jeezy. Yeah. There's niggas Fresh driving used Hondas and there's niggas driving. Okay, Bugattis. no, 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 used. You're right. So, you're right. You're right. When I was really thinking about complacency, I was just thinking about there's just different places where people are. And you could sit here and say, you know what? Spiritually, I have no relationship with God, let's say, right? And then you find that of some level of importance, you start to seek that or you start to do yeah, more and be example. more involved in the church. I just feel like there's different categories, different so levels different. when it comes yeah. to complacency. Complacency is as varied as the idea of beauty, right? It exists Fact. and it's important, but everybody's idea is different. You That's know what true. I mean? Yeah. So, that's true. You know I mean? yeah. We'll leave it there then. Good conversation. Yeah. All right. I'll fuck with so that. So the next one is um bad money management. If um if you get with a nigga ladies and he fuck his rent money up regularly, man, it'd be hard to say that nigga's gonna run my household. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if, if you meet a dude who's bad with money, it's a problem. You just want someone who can control their own finances. I never really understood myself because I operate things differently, but I know there's men that just come home, work, they give their woman a check and she says, here, you can use this. And she handles all the bills. I I don't operate that way myself. However, 
if you're fine with that, then you shouldn't care if a nigga is bad at managing money. You should only care that he can provide. Yeah, managing money is important and it can rock the first thing that we were kind of talking about when we were talking about complacency, almost equaling stability. Sit here and think about how much money Warren Sapp made, lost it all. Hammer made, lost it all. Think about all these people that made hundreds of millions of dollars and due to the fact that they spent well beyond what was necessary in excess, past excess, and was unwise with their money and what they had to go through rocks the relationship. So some of these some of these habits that we're talking about, they can rock the relationship to the core and essentially ruin it or destroy it. There's nothing that can destroy a relationship more than, oh man, I'm living on top of the world and now I'm in a, now I'm in a used Volkswagen on the side of US one. You know what I'm saying? Sleeping at nights. I mean, so it's just it's crazy. Like the money management is so important, dog. In, like you have zero impulse control. It's a symptom for other shit to me. There are a lot of people in specifically a lot of communities that don't have financial literacy skills. I don't think it's a, a lack of wanting to. I don't think anybody goes, well, no, there's there's real ignorant niggas out there like Kodak Black. But I don't think <laughs> most, but I don't think most niggas Who do go, Kodak Black? money, know about money and how to use it wisely and spend it and say it. Nah, I don't want to know that. A lot of situations, particularly with people of color, is through some skill, right? Singing, dancing, acting, fighting, kicking, dribbling, some type of ball or whatever it is. For the most part, you go from really levels of poverty or, 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 or you know, a certain level of living to having an extreme amount of wealth. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think people don't know how to. I was watching something. There's a one of these young rappers, Lil some nigga. I don't know his name. There's a lot of littles, was, bro. There's a lot of littles. Yeah, yeah, that's my point. He was um He was talking about the fact that his, his parents are professors and he happens to be a rapper. And he said, um, you know, what he's, he's like, I have conversations with guys and they don't understand in order for you to really be able to afford spending six, five, six hundred thousand dollars on a diamond baguette necklace. You can't just make two million dollars a year. That's a horrible purchase. You just spent, you know, 40, 50 percent of your earnings on a necklace. He says, you really got to make like. 20 million a year for that not to be a horrible purchase. Yeah, for you know what I'm saying? Significant, and so yeah. mm-hmm. something so basic that I think we all know, I think there's a vast majority. I said this before when I graduated from law school, and this was before I really got righteous and realized I need to be helping as many people because I can. I said, man, if I would have became an agent, even if I did it the right way, at somebody who came from not having anything, who put himself through school and got to representing some of these brothers out here getting millions of dollars in some of these professional leagues. They would have been well off because I wouldn't have been trying to steal from them. Right. But what they got now is a bunch of fucking sharks. And you got a bunch of 19, 20 year old niggas that don't know what to do with 15 million dollar signing bonus. Yeah. White guy does. And there's no this is not no racist shit. That is the demographic of these it's guys. It's called resources. Working. It's right. called systematic resources. So, mm-hmm. You know, won't happen with my jitterbugs. I promise you that. I'll quit. Oh, yeah. I'll fucking be their man. For show show. So. But anyways. Yep. You know, on the flip side of that. Of money management, you also ladies don't want to get with a man who is stingy as hell with the money. You definitely want someone who's going to manage the money. But if if you can't ask your man for for some help here, or he be willing to help you out, or, or just treat you in in certain ways, I was watching one of those shows, like I, I think it's called Dirt Cheap, some shit like that, where the people on the show they're like ridiculously cheap, and the, the man won't take his girl out to a restaurant. So when it was their anniversary, she was like, I want to go out to eat. This nigga, he drove 15 minutes down the street, got out, threw some eggs on the engine of the car on a pan and fried yeah, some eggs and made around. a dinner. And he said, you said you want to eat out? And he made dinner with the engine heat on his car. He's that, that cheap. And my point is that's how, bitch, that's how a nigga gets stabbed in the neck with a chopstick. Like for real. The way on she looked bullshit. at him, I'm sure she killed that nigga that night. But my point of the matter is you also don't want that extreme either to where he's so frugal that you can't enjoy life. In the beginning, I could have been like that. I think I was like that out of what I believed was necessity. Like, bro, I'm never going back. I'm never going back. You know, you know, to the feeling of not having the feeling of, of of feeling displaced because you don't have 
the same access to, to, to the resources and, and shit. And, and so therefore you're living a different type of way than what you want to. I overcompensated in the very beginning to try to make it through. As I started earning, I let that go a little bit, much more and more. And I just kind of started unraveling it to the point where I, I'll go glamping right now. You know what I'm saying? And being a 800 square foot TP for $700 a night if I want to. I feel like there's a time and place for everything. The thing is just, it's, it's whether you want to be excessive about it. And, and just to be clear, uh, listeners, you can spend $800 to sleep in a, t- a TP and still not get your PP wet. Just yeah. so you, just so there's, you know, there's, there's plausibility to, to some of those. Things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So the yeah. next thing you want to do, ladies, you want to stay away from selfish. In this case, I'm speaking just in general within the relationship. You know, selfish with his emotions, selfish with just how he handles you, maybe your kids because they ain't his and he don't really like them. But you know, just things like that. You know what I mean? You don't want a selfish nigga. <laughs> no, seriously. Like you like you like Papa John's and that nigga every time he got to go to Pizza Hut. Don't know nobody even like Pizza Hut, nigga. But he never ever once gets the Papa John's for you. Yeah, he's un- he's just hey, not thoughtful. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. If I'm getting pizza, yeah. If I'm this guy, your example. If I'm getting pizza, yeah. I'm going to get the pizza that I want to get. <laughs> if you want to have some of this pizza, I will share it with you. But if you go, oh, you didn't get the Papa John's pizza? No hope. Because I like Marcos. I didn't want the Papa yeah. John's pizza. And if you don't like Marcos, then clearly you don't know good pizza, and you shouldn't waste my pizza on your tongue anyway. Right. So well, dang, dog. I mean, yeah. what about the that's compromise, bro? Where's the compromise, though? What do you mean the compromise? Then use your own damn money and get some Papa John's. Like, here's my thing. <laughs> selfish is not <laughs> selfish. Is, to me, selfish is getting something that I was going to get, doing something I was going to do and allowing somebody to participate or to have some of or whatever that is. Selfish isn't foregoing what I want to do for them. Now, that is thoughtful, but that doesn't make me selfish. So, so. I don't believe that getting what I want and that being the option that I'm willing to share means that I'm selfish because I don't get what the other person wants. The person that does that. that, the person that does that thing is thoughtful and kudos to them. But me not doing that thing doesn't make me selfish. Those I, I think in things. some way it could. Why? Because if it were today, no. If it were next week, no. But if it was a consistent habit of where and and this is where it differs. Right. And there's levels to everything, because I see your point and I in a way I actually agree why it's still selfish to me is because there's no workaround. So to me, if that hoe really wants Papa John's and I want Marcos, I might just get a small Papa John's pizza scent and get my Marcos and we're both happy versus me always getting what I want and not considering what the woman I love wants. But but my point is this, if I want to get pizza and I get the pizza I want and I am willing to share because I'm not following y'all niggas and I'm willing to share what I want with the pizza that I have by default, I am not selfish. D, D and selfish. the only reason we're not following, I'm, I'm not following you completely is because the sheer definition of selfish is one that's chiefly concerned with his or own personal pleasure. So at the end of the day, if all you care about is your <laughs> pizza and your pleasure from eating that pizza, and you just so told this whole, listen, so that, if you didn't want it on your tongue, let me know. Then in all honesty, it sounds like you being, you know, low key, high key, whatever key, selfish. So by that definition, everyone is selfish about tons of things. <laughs> Like, like, they are. So, they so, are. so, and, and if that's what, and if we can agree that's on that, true. then there's no end to the argument. Like, if yes, that's the definition, that. that definition is all fucking all encompassing. Like, that's that it was is, no fucking dog. Whammy. Anything that pleasure? Are you fucking kidding? No, me? I'm just no. saying. If you're chiefly, chiefly is the is yeah. the word. So that means ma- majority of the time you're concerned only about your everyone about tons of things. No, Everybody that's not true. There are people. I'm going to tell you. There are people who are selfless I'm though. Oh, yeah. And there's niggas that's seven feet tall. My point is there's an exception <laughs> to everything. People of course there is. That's what it is. People are chiefly concerned, listen, listen. Are I, chiefly not, concerned about how they leave the house in the morning, how they speak, how they smell, how they all of those things. So that's everyone all the time. My point is that definition is shitty as fuck. If that's okay. what Webster's, yeah. is Webster is bringing out for it, it's bullshit. Listen, I think listen, that we all are. You selfish. see a nigga beating on his chest. 
real hard but right now. I'm making, I'm but, using, I'm using clear logic. And there's I'm no using clear logic. As, let me just tell you, there's nothing, let me tell you, there's nothing more appeasing to me than someone that is willing to, to compromise them, compromise something about what's going on for themselves to make me happy. To me, yes, that's thoughtful, but, and, but that is, thoughtfulness is the absolute opposite of being selfish. And that goes a long way. I say to myself, if I woke up every morning and I said to myself, I want to do something to make my woman happy today, that person thought the same way. I guarantee you, we would eliminate selfishness. We would be thoughtful about each other and therefore compromise to the point where we're both receiving pleasure and, and we're both <laughs> happy. Therefore, I feel like it's plausible to be there. You could get there. It's I'm not really, saying it's easy, it's, but you could get there. Everyone is responsible for their own happiness. And the people in our lives, we look to them for certain levels of happiness. So I see what you're saying. I think that when you put someone else first, if they're putting you first, you will find balance. But you are at the same time responsible for your own happiness. And if you're not selfish at times, you're going to be unhappy. So I see where D's coming from. And I actually agree. I think that it's important to be selfish. But with anything in life, there should be balance. So as willing as 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 assertive as you are and, and, and certain to make sure you get what you want, there are going to be times where you got to be willing to take the L. And I know that D knows this. You have kids, particularly a daughter. I can't tell you how many times I've done shit that I had no business or interest doing with my daughter because she wanted to do it. So we have many moments of selfish, uh, selflessness, you know what I mean? But um, inherently, I think point. we all are naturally. Yeah. Well said, because that's in line with what I said about the definition. Then at some point yeah. it's applicable to then every it's applicable to everyone. Right. If yeah. you are constantly the person adjusting to everybody else, then you're a doormat. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you show me a person that's constantly adjusting to everyone else. No, no, there's no way that you can live like that. Then we're making my point. My you know, point is, you know, a lot of times, men, though, yes, and at times, no. And we're gonna move on, but you know, a lot of men, when it comes to this thoughtfulness shit, like it's to get the pussy. Once he in there, he on some other shit. But if you really think about it, women though, they're more inclined to do so. I, I can think of so many situations, and I think it's you know maybe different based on how you feel about the girl you're with, but. Think back to when you were dating, like, you know, she really wasn't, you know, your wife or any shit like that. And if a hoe didn't want to do what you didn't want to do, all right, you know, you know what the door is like. And then what did they, no, no, I, I watched that football game of this, the sport that I don't care two shits about because they want to spend time with you. So I think that we'll compromise when it suits us and we really want it. Like, I can't tell you how many reality TV shows I watch just because I want to try to slap my dick in the pussy, you know, while we cuddle. You know what I'm saying? You know, with your girl. Okay. No, nobody. No respect. Okay. No, no. Yeah, I mean, like, I can. Yeah, I can respect. Yeah, I can we'll respect it, but ten minutes. Not yeah. every. I don't think everyone is wired to the point where I'm doing X and X for a particular outcome. Like to be honest with you, I'm naturally fucking thoughtful, and at the end of the day, I can still not be a doormat. But my thoughtfulness has nothing to do in regards to am I going to get some pussy tonight or not. I think sometimes you there are people who truly get joy from seeing other people happy. And and so I think it's not an absolute thing that most that that bad are, thing though that our men are like that. It, it, yeah, it is it's is legit bad, happening. Is it a bad thing though if someone does something to make you happy and at the same time they gain happiness from it too? They find a way to carve out some joy for them as well. It seems pretty quid pro quo. No, I agree. If you want a nigga to, oh, you want to cuddle? You want a nigga, oh, okay. I'm going to slide this no. dick in. When everybody that's, wins, that's, that's, no one can disagree with the saying. feeling when everybody wins, dog. When everybody wins, that's everybody saying. wins. I'm just saying. All right. So the next habit, ladies, is a man who breaks his promises. Now, I always tell my kids, I, I take promises seriously. So I don't make them shits unless I know I'm going to keep it. Because when I say I promise, you might as well engrave it in stone. That's why when my kids quickly say, you promised that? I say, no, I will not do that because I know that I will definitely have to. So you definitely, you, you don't want a man, lady, who doesn't keep his promises. When he says, I promise, you should be able to take it to the bank, depend, and, and, and bet mortgage your house on it. Damn it. 
Yeah, I don't, well, I don't think women are getting that. I think you got to no. judge too where that, and I'm playing devil's advocate because otherwise shit gets yeah. born agreeing. I would say you have to know what his intentions are. What my point is, I think that people innocently overpromise and underdeliver all the time. The yeah. mastery of not doing that comes with maturity and experience. I yeah. can tell you that at, you know, like when I was my 20s, I said, oh yeah, I'm definitely going, yeah, I'm going to be there. And then all of a sudden I'm at work, I can't get off. Or I had, I forgot I had this other obligation that completely slipped Where my you mind. really had you know no intention. <laughs> no, 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 not, no, not that situation though. So, so I'm like, damn, but like she's probably like, this motherfucker don't care about me. And I'm like, damn, I, I totally forgot I had to do this other thing. Yeah. That, that unfortunately happens to be more important than the thing I promised I would do. So you got to make a judgment call. You know what I'm saying? And that's what everybody does every day. Whereas now, do I, especially, I mean, I'm talking about professionally, social, everything. Do I, yeah. I undersell all the time. I am straight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I undersell because the, I, I've learned you're much better off underselling and then over delivering than overselling. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. Well, agree. let me just say the epitome of what a player is, is, is legit salesman. If he, yeah. he going to spit that shit. He going to tell you all the benefits, none of the cons. And and he's gonna tell you you can get it for nineteen ninety nine with me, and you can That's make nasty. seven payments. You know what I'm saying? Nasty. Like he, 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 he breaking yeah. it down so he breaking it down to molecules so much you have no choice but to say I can afford that, right? And then you trust him, and then at the first sign of him getting what he wanted out of the sale, yeah, you ain't getting no return on your investment. You would leave zero, like literally a one star rating, dog, on Google review. But that's just what so people funny. do. That's what players do. I, I, I think Jess said it best. I, and, and every man should take this advice. And I don't want women to take this advice because then it will throw a, a wrench in the game. But, man, under fucking sell and over deliver. Women want to know what is going, what it's going to be. So if you say, hey, we're going to go out to eat. Where are we going? I don't know. We somewhere Grab a little bite. Mm-hmm. You know, just a little bit under fucking set because you maybe you don't know what your money gonna be like Friday. Maybe you don't know where you're gonna be up to. So right Straight now, like nigga, Chick Fil like A is on the table, Chili's on the table, <laughs> but maybe the bitch stuff you off really sloppy and right the night before. So now you want to take it to Bahama Breeze or Roof Chris. You get what I'm saying? Like, so if you undersell and then overperform, you honestly even make yourself look better once you come through. So don't 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 sell a dream, fellas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> unless you can back it like real talk no, even I, if, if i say i'm gonna, gonna do gonna something yeah if i say i'm gonna do something regardless of the degree of it i'm just gonna fucking do it so the, the level of consistency in regards to me saying that i'm going to do something and my actions aligning is enough to be a panty dropper to most women anyway because that's what you're doing you see, let me tell you that's where trust is created dog it's formulated into to being that person the flaky niggas that's they don't have trust on that they already they already talking they already looking in their phone yeah. in their contact list and looking at who's going to be the replacement you know, you they know though, yeah, i hear what you let me finish flaky. let me say this real quick jeezy let me say this real quick. Jay, i hear what you're saying i'm not necessarily disagreeing with you all i'm saying is ain't nothing better than underselling <laughs> You know what you say, dog? I'm just trying to play devil's advocate too, dog. But you know what? I gotta agree with you. I gotta agree with you. I'm telling you, after after today, Des, I will fucking undersell and I will blow her mind with reality. It's like Jeezy. It's like legitimately getting a surprise every time. Like surprise. For real. Like for real. Who don't like surprises, bro? Who don't like surprises? Facts. Please learn that lesson today, fellas. And, and, and option B, just don't make no fucking promises. That's the one I like more. But um, all right, ladies. So the next one here, don't you don't want a man who is clingy? Man, I men don't like women that are clingy, but a Never. nigga that's clingy, fellas. Oh my gosh, fellas, it's a bad look. They talk a lot of shit about us. I have some female uh homegirls. And they, when they keep that shit real about a man that's clean, they really talk shit. You have to have your own thing going. You got to give your lady space. You got to make them come to you and, and want to be around you. So, ladies, if you get with a man and he's all up under you, 
I, I don't know if that's the one you're going to want to marry because you're really going to get tired of that nigga. And I seen a chick on Snap the other day. I'm pretty sure that's how it started. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that we can give that advice without having a subsequent podcast about like, helping out some of our lame brothers out there. And I mean lame <laughs> in, the, in the most respectful sense. And listen, let, like, yeah, right. Right. Let's, not be, let's not be weird about it. Y'all know who y'all are, fellas. Like, y'all ain't got to yeah. tell nobody. We don't know you personally, so don't take offense. But you know, man, you might have a good job. You went to school, but you can't pull a bitch to save you. Socially. Life. Yeah, socially, so, you're lame. So no, we, we've yeah, never done I don't think thing. we've ever done yeah. that. And we need to because let me yeah. say something. That's a, that's a you, full podcast. Well, what we're telling dudes to do yeah. right now is, what we're telling dudes to do right now is, don't don't use don't use all of the tools that you have, right? Don't don't put everything on the table. Right, right. The thing is, the thing is, they don't have nothing else. They don't have the cool comic collect. You can't say, "Hey, man, put that cool comic collect personality on for the." They don't got that. And hey, yeah. put that smooth nigga on. They can't put just the turn it off and on. You right? Put the fun, yeah. put the funny guy on for you go out. All they got is the clingy yeah. nigga. So we got to educate, man, and motivate. You know what I'm saying? You have to find a way to give a woman attention with almost making it and making her feel like you care, but at the same time, not caring. It, it's Other just options. the weirdest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the weirdest balance where <laughs> he has to, to be intrigued by the fact that, man, this nigga really don't care if I leave. Can't be too accessible. But, yeah. but yet, but yet when I'm in front of him, he acts like he needs me there. You know what I mean? And, and it's a beautiful battle. Let me tell you, it is beautiful yeah, it is. because I've yeah. done I've done that before where you know there was a there was a point where I was just like, okay, I can't like I couldn't reach her when I want and I couldn't get her to respond timely and all that type of stuff. And it would irritate the fuck out of me, right? And then I said to myself, you know what? I'm gonna shut this part off right here. And then dog, I, let me tell you, I disappeared. And got into everything. Do you see what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, hey, um, so you wasn't gonna text me today? You wasn't gonna call me yeah. today? We've all been, yeah, yeah. You yeah. oh, 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 so you just you acting brand new? I mean, yeah. so it, it you're right when it comes to balance, because the reality is the second you shut it off, it comes back in a wave. But when you meet when you meet them where they wanna be, it's it's almost like they get they push back, so it's it's, it's a weird yeah. push and pull of the tide, man. And and it, it's 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 surgical, bro. It's surgical for sure. Yeah, crazy. Word. Clinging Word. to these hoes, nigga. Stop it. All right, ladies. So you don't want to marry a man, and this one seems pretty obvious, but you don't want to marry a lying ass nigga. Now, the thing <laughs> about that is everybody lies. <laughs> like that's the thing. You 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 know. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. My boy, keep it real. No, 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 no. Keep it no, real, I'm real. Though. real. No, no, no. Sometimes you gotta. Mm, <laughs> you won't. Hey, don't give it all. Don't nah, do it. Don't keep it all. Nah, I won't keep it real. But what I'll say is that women often act like men ain't shit when y'all know y'all ain't shit either. You know, I always find it amazing how a woman will really r- hang you out to dry about oh my your God. lie. And, and they do it themselves. She lied to you. No, for sure forget she lied to you the day before, nigga. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But see, their shit is minimized and all, and a man's lie is bigged up. And, and I don't know that men do that the same. I, I feel like we men, we kind of keep that shit on the appropriate level. Like, my lie, your lie, it's still a lie, you know? And if we were to get biblical, the Lord says a but sin is a sin, ho. No Why sin is here? greater than another, I lied about. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I fucked six hoes and you just lied about what we eat for dinner, but, you know, it's a sin. I guess there's degrees, the but it's still on, a lot. It's still a sin. Come on. You gonna, you know, so, you gonna do this? But, but just to, to bring this all, I'm just kind of saying everyone lies. So I guess really what you want is you don't want a man who lies excessively. Habitually. And habitually. Maybe that's the best way. Like That he lied for no reason. You know what I'm saying? For no you know reason mean? at all. You oh, ever I met them dudes people, that just... Though. Dog, yeah. I know some of these dudes. They lie for no reason, dog. Like, like there's, like there's no, there was, there was, there was even no consequence attached to finding out. And the no truth, one asked and they them still that lie. specifically. No yeah, one. No one asked them this, and they be like, "Yeah, dog." And I used to play professionally. You know, I'm like, nigga, we we was talking about church, nigga. How we even? Like, we ain't like, even talking about that. That's a confidence thing, man. Because because I agree with what y'all saying. What I'm saying is just packing on to that is that's a that's an indicator of other 
other things that's going True. on, some other insecurities, because True. a man, listen, and it's not about how much money. There's a certain pride that a man has in himself, just as yeah. being a man. And you listen, you'll find a dude who's a CEO of a company making six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year. And he's he's full of insecurities. He's a walking insecurity. And you'll find a nigga that work oh, with yeah. Firestone who changed oil. And he he more man than you ever need. So so oh, be careful about that. But he's with a lot of tattoos, though. And, and would fuck that rich man's wife. And, and, and a good hairline, yeah. possibly. You know yeah. What I mean? So don't so don't don't confuse yeah. earning potential with with manhood and reliability. They're two separate things. Earning potential is just that earning potential. And that is what you set yourself up to be able to do in life and what's important to you. But that does not mean no, you're I do a, agree. a good and man I, or a good provider. Yeah. Any any person who is a man of significance or an alpha male, it's more than just that one thing. No person is one thing, bro. If you are, if you're not multidimensional, dog, like you're really nothing long term. Like, Jen, I, Jen, you know, what I would tell you is, though, there there are a lot of very one dimensional, simple people on the planet. That's oh, the I thing agree. Is, the, the thing. Yeah. The thing is, you, you don't surround yourself with those types of people. But let me tell you something. I run into them every day. And I say to myself, Jesus, is this all there is to this person? Is there all that, like, this is all there is to you? Like, there's nothing else? What a lonely, lonely brain you have. You know what God I'm saying? Damn, and, the people, yeah. and the people that interact with you. No, seriously, man. It's, it's, no, it's I'm saying your moment. eyes Your eyes really are showing sympathy in this situation right now. No, I feel bad, yeah. man. I feel bad. Alarming is what I would use. God yeah. dang. Yeah, yeah and, and, and you really don't want a man who makes excess, excessive excuses either you know mm-hmm. that that's the worst you know it, it almost might be worse than lying you know because with a lie i the nigga kind of know but with the excessive excuses <laughs> maybe he really be, maybe he but be, i don't know if he believes it or not like he just always made it no nigga just do what you say you're gonna do so what i think more than anything what this one says is marry a man who is a man of his word you know, so or lies or lies minimally or on average. Or lies so well, you don't even know, know he's you don't even know he's alive. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> so, okay, oh, so shit. the next one is uh and this one should be obvious, ladies, but it's not because a lot of y'all got crack babies. Don't God marry damn. a man with addiction issues, okay? Like if that nothing. nigga's an alcoholic right now, guess what? He's probably going to punch you in the throat if you marry him and he's still an alcoholic. Those men tend to be abusive. Men gamblers too. Issues. Yeah, ga- I was just going to say, gamblers, they're risking not only your life, uh, their life, but your life as well when that nigga can't pay up because they're notoriously bad at it. You know what I mean? So drug users, and, and we're talking about hard drugs. Uh, uh, a nigga who smokes weed every day, Man, he could be your best friend and partner for life. But if the nigga's <laughs> snorting coke every day, I'm not sure I would bet on him. And Des, I think you were gonna make a point that coke's I coke's on the say, fence. But yeah, keep coke's going. definitely on the fence. But anything can be abused realistically. So yeah. even trees, we you know, I, I even said weed, but if a nigga's like buying an ounce of weed and not, you know, paying the light bill, maybe that nigga's has a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like we need light. You know what I mean? <laughs> so how are we gonna eat brownies after we smoke? You he just I mean? he like, just he needs to sacrifice it. for the Reggie one week. That's it. No, never. Not an option. I don't know. Both of y'all both of y'all look like nah, bruh. I've been nah, waiting man. to burn these candles. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, all right, cat wear you right. <laughs> Shout out to cat. All right, so no addiction issue. All right, this one's a good one takes no accountability now this definitely goes both ways but we're going to keep it on our side mm-hmm. ladies make sure you marry a man who takes accountability i was just talking to my son about this earlier because his newly 13 year old ass has no accountability right he thinks the world owes him everything he he got in a fight at school he beat this kid up on the bus who happened to be his ex-friend so i don't even know why he's beating up friends yeah. oh so oh no kid. Yeah, so he kick, gets kicked off the bus, and now he can't play video games for a week. This nigga texts me the next day while at school. Shouldn't even be on his phone. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dad, when do you think I'll be able to play video games? My <laughs> friends keep asking me. That's an example, ladies and gentlemen, of no fucking mm-hmm. accountability. Nigga, you got in trouble. You got kicked off the bus yesterday. Today's not the day to ask that. 
you want a man that can own his shit. I think we're all going to make mistakes on both sides. No one is perfect, but it's a lot better when a man messes up and says, man, I fucked up. Yeah, I didn't mean to eat your sister pussy, but, you know, these things happen. I fucked up versus that man who comes in and being like, man, that wasn't me who was eating your Uh-oh. sister pussy. I don't care if you got that picture. Uh-oh. I don't care if that's that <laughs> my neck tattoo <laughs> that you got in there. No, that's not. Everybody got that same neck tattoo, nigga. Like, no, the birthmark. Come on. 20, 20 million niggas got that same birth. So my point of the matter is you want somebody who owns their shit. I always say accountability, accountability. And, and that's the biggest thing I stress with even myself at, to, to hold myself to, to the standards that I really want. And, and, and that's being accountable for my actions. D, have you ever been in a relationship or even known someone that they they never wrong? They've never done wrong. They've never been wrong. Yeah. Like. Like, how could you live an entire life and never do anything wrong? Always stepped right. Always made the right decisions. There is nothing more infuriating than a person that can't take accountability, literally say I'm sorry, and make modifications to their behavior. Y'all keep asking me these questions, and I keep telling y'all, I do not you have know long-term relationships. With people. <laughs> I just, because, because of the very thing you're talking about, it's, if you have a person, listen, I'm all about giving people opportunities, right? Like if I'm, if I'm, if I have a friend or a significant other, anything like that, who, who has those kind of issues, I'm going to communicate my concerns and I'm going to give them an opportunity to change. But once I realize that that is futile, remaining in that relationship is futile, right? Because a motherfucker got to want to change. Right. Yeah. You can't change for a motherfucker. They got to want to change and you can it's support true. them in that change. So so if they if they aren't willing to change, then I'm fighting an uphill battle that, frankly, I'm not I'm not willing to, nor do I need to fight. You know what I mean? Because there, there are millions and millions of billions of people out there that take accountability for their actions. So why would I try to change your way of thinking when I already know that I can't? You know, so for me, I just I don't have those individuals. And when it's been like a friend. If I got friends that don't take accountability, something has happened. It's like, hey, man, dog. Nah, dog. Remember, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Like, they don't hear from me. No, no, no. Yeah. <clears throat> All it is is an entitled person, dog. And, man, if you entitled like that, bro, you got to check yourself because it you, you can't make excuses and it's never you. You know what I'm saying? You can't sit here and make excuses like that as if, as if you can never be anything but right and just, bro. Like, it's impossible. Like you know, this comes only to Jesus mind. walked this earth like that. No, I'm just saying only Jesus walked this earth like that. Yeah. So that's bullshit. But something you said, something you said that made this come to mind just to say to the ladies, like, don't think that a man can't handle you. A man can, you know, any real man can. You really should be more concerned about whether he wants to handle you. Hmm. You know, you, you get it so twisted. Women do with this whole, nah, you know, he just can't handle me. And it's, nigga just don't want to. That's it. You know. No, that's it. Danny Lane that's the realest that shit you said, dog. Called, no, seriously. She made that song called Easy. Every man wants to be with something that's easy. And I'm not saying the pussy easy. I'm saying the vibe is easy. I'm saying the the, the communication, the, the interaction, the flow. Being around her, being around her, mm-hmm. being around. It just feels so easy and light. It, 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 yeah. it man, effortless. So really pay attention to this lady, and, and remember that you know. But you should hey, do your best. If that ain't an accountability statement right there, when you hear a woman say, "What happened?" You know, he just couldn't handle me. Strong. I'm a strong woman independent he couldn't yeah couldn't handle all this yeah yeah boy and you disrespect but that's the biggest lie you you lying to yourself in a little bit you know what i'm saying and that's the worst lie you can tell yourself a lie to yourself she didn't do no self-reflection she didn't do nothing wrong yeah what they said what did lauren hill say she said i'm paraphrasing here she said if a man lies to himself what makes you think he won't lie to you shoot Mm. boy i tell you if you lie to yourself man yeah Drop the mic one and, more. And, 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 that's, and that's real and can be flipped otherwise. So if ladies, if you're lying to yourself, man, you definitely lying to that nigga. You know what I mean? Because you're not being honest with yourself about who you are and how you moving. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And that's the worst thing ever because 
how you gonna hold a nigga accountable when you're n- not handling your business? You ain't you know, holding I yourself think accountability. Account. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And accountability, right? We can go to your kids and say, "Hey, listen, son, you're supposed to be doing this, yada, 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 because you're doing it." You know what I mean? You I, a crackhead can't hold another crackhead accountable to to <laughs> to, to, to quitting. That shit don't make yeah. no sense. Man, when you finna start no, quitting, bro? Oh, you yeah. need to quit, bro. I, it ain't good you for you. Me. Let me you get that one right here. The dollar store, nigga. You ain't even got no job. You out here on the street, <laughs> but I got a job. Let me get that rock you know right there. <laughs> so, so you really gotta be real with yourself because if you lie to yourself about what's what, man. And and, and 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 man, I don't know why, because y'all know me, and it's gonna go off, and y'all gonna say this, but be accountable in every way. Like, man, y'all be lying to y'all stuff about how y'all big and sexy and and, and all this. There, like, now that, that should be killing me, dog, because I know the truth. I know y'all are lying to yourselves that y'all happy the way y'all are. Y'all not. <laughs> Y'all not, and when y'all in, and when you're by yourself, <laughs> and you're in the mirror, you looking and saying, "Damn, I why I want to lose this. I want to do this." Listen, it takes one day at a time. You can do it. Do that shit. Yeah. Yeah. When you talked about those transformation videos earlier, I joked about it, but them shits be inspiring because you know there's nothing they did in six months to get there. They said, "I'm not gonna think about a year or two years from now. I'm thinking about today, and then I'm thinking about tomorrow." And yeah, and, and watch how that progression takes you to your goal. So that's what I re- I really mean that when we talk about that, hold yourself accountable, ladies, because man, you want a nigga to, to love your body, you don't love it. Go, G. Say this real quick, because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to promote no, that. G, you hit the shit right on point. Like I, I go to the gym regularly. For any listeners, y'all know I, I like to go to the gym. It's a hobby, man. I seen a lady coming in here, maybe because you know it get real packed in January when everybody got these oh, fake yeah. ass ideas oh, yeah. about how they gonna change their new year, but they never actually developed the, the willpower from the year before, so it's gonna be the same shit. But everybody start in January. She mm-hmm. started coming um in December, um, maybe no in the middle of November, she started coming. I saw her and she didn't know how to use the machine. She kept asking, she asked me, she asked people for help. How do you use this? What does this work? All those things. She would come in every day. A couple of times I even seen some other women kind of picking at her because she was a bigger lady. Um, and I was talking to her one day and she's just like, yeah, I just been really, you know, just kind of out of it. And my kids are going to college now and I realize I need to work myself and eating better. Long story short, I seen that lady two days ago, bro. Not to the point where she wants to be, but a market difference. And what oh, yeah. you can tell is she ain't taking no diet pills. She ain't doing that. She changed her life. She in the gym. I see her regularly different times, but she's in the gym. Every time I'm in the gym, I would say 95% of the time I see her, right? She do the Zumba class, and then she come out and do weights. Every time I'm there, oh, I'm in the gym four or five days a week. So she my point is around. she probably changed. A person that has the willpower to come to the gym four or five days a week is mm. also the person that has the willpower to change their diet, right? Yeah. So I, I, I want to preach on this because Gigi already said what needed to be said. But my point is, my, my thing is, it's one day at a time. You ain't get fat in one, two days, in a week. You ain't going to lose that goddamn weight in a week. Yeah. So as much time as it took your ass to get big as fuck, that's how much time you got to be ready for it too. And stop taking shortcuts. Yeah. You know, whenever you hear people trying to get right and lose weight, it's a lot of, I'm just going to eat these chips today. Or I didn't do too bad. I only ate a cookie here. Like, stop taking shortcuts. You wouldn't want your kids to take a shortcut in life. You see in the movies, you take a shortcut, you die. So stop taking shortcuts and just ride the shit out the right way. I mean, man, we got to move on because I, yeah. I might cuss a whole out. No, no, no let's not out. do that. All right. So <laughs> the next uh, habit, don't marry a man who doesn't set boundaries. Now, I'm not entirely sure where to go with this. So I want Jen to go ahead and take that one. What do, what do you think Easy. that means? When I sit here and I think about the question, you know, you're not setting boundaries. I know that I'm a, a divorcee and I know after the fact that I legitimately had to say, based off some self-evaluation, there are certain things that I'm not going to accept going forward into future relationships, dog. Where I accepted them prior, it ain't even going to fucking happen this time. I don't. I, I mean, God could come and whisper it in my ear and I might be like, are you sure? I might question it myself. God talked to you, you need to do it. 
I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, in the Lord Jesus. I'm Jesus. just telling you, that's, but that's how I'm just saying how strongly a brother felt about it. So I know. We one of the things that I to said to myself was, listen, <laughs> I'm not going to hold how I feel about something inside and allow it to fester and rot. You, you, you know, what's crazy. If you don't set boundaries, you, your woman won't even respect you. So yeah. this is a, a kind of crazy habit per se. Don't marry a man who doesn't set boundaries. Of course she wouldn't. She she probably wouldn't even want to because nothing is more unattractive than a man who who, who, who don't stand for nothing all over him. Doesn't stand, stand for something. Nothing, don't stand yeah. on his own two feet. And, and she can just do a nigga any kind of way. So you definitely don't want to take that approach, fellas. Set boundaries. At the end of the day, they say if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And I think that's the epitome of what this means. Like, you have to be a man of whatever principle it is. It don't got to be every, the standard principle. Everyone got their own. But you got to have something, right? Definitely gonna, my definitely was like, okay, I'm going to speak my mind. And I'm not going to allow that junk to fester. And, and, and you're going to hear me. If you're not going to hear me, then I don't want to fuck with you. Because I already did that. That don't work, right? So it's preventing any future issues with you. It's preventing you from having to waste your time with me for a year to figure out that mm, maybe he's maybe he's not playing. When 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 someone says something, especially when a man says something, ladies hear hear him, hear him, because he he's meaning what he said. He he said that men set boundaries, bro. What you will be about and what you won't be about, and stand by it because. No woman is going to respect you to the point Jeezy made yeah. if you don't have it. You you got to let a woman, and I know Dez would agree with this because this seems like the way he handles all his relationships. You got to be willing to let a woman be mad with the <coughs> reality that you lay out. Oh, that's, that's, that and is that, standard and, 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 right and, there. And while it sounded like I was actually, you know, talking shit about you, Dez, in a way. No, you respect that. No. I'm, I'm digging. Hey, don't shit talk to me. You hit it. it. Yeah, I think that's the exact way that a man has to handle it. I think when men fall in love and the pussy is good, mm -hmm. and especially if you like a nigga who kind of know he low-key ugly and you, you 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 married up, it's real easy to fall victim to like, man, like I got to go oh, with yeah, it. Bro. Like I don't want to lose it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, these are real things. No, no, this is bro, that's real shit. Dude. Lots. So that's Lots. You're saying there's a lot of right people now. in that. Are you fucking kidding we me? I seen a couple together him? the other day. I said, I said, this nigga got to be fucking carrying her purse the way he ugly and she's so bad. I didn't know how he got it. You know what I'm saying? So there's no telling. I, I, you you, you got to ask him his story. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. There's no telling what he you did. You have to you have to put to a point where you you don't care with her being about her being mad because you're setting a boundary that she respects and she knows is reasonable, even if she doesn't like it. But once you lay it out, she will adhere to it. Do not care if a woman is mad and, and try to people please her. She will not respect you. You have to be attentive and considerate of her feelings. But if it's some shit that speaks to your happiness and your peace and it doesn't disrespect her, man, and that shit make her mad because you're not doing it the way she would like. Well, I'll fuck her. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying say that to her, but I'm saying. Fuck no. her. Let her be mad. And I assure you, she will come back around, nigga, and probably suck you off that night. I'm telling you. Stay strong, fella. I think that goes to respect. Right. So, ladies, if you if you find yourself that you like this, you looking at a dude and you feel like, man, this dude don't stand for shit. Trust me. You're not going to respect him in the future. Let that man go right now. Just yeah. let him go. Let him be somebody else's problem. Boo. For real. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the yeah. last one, I saved the best for last. I thought um don't marry a man who is incapable of communicating effectively you know in your language of understanding <laughs> no that's per that's a good addition i don't believe men are the best communicators within the confinement of a relationship typically if you look at the numbers and i don't have them in front of me because i didn't look at the numbers um you, you, I think most men would agree when it's in a relationship, the women tend to be the, the high communicators, high communicators and men are, are communicating minimally. So it's not necessarily how much you say, but it's just, you know, how precise you communicate. 
And you cannot marry a man, ladies, who do, does not communicate in the way that you understand, or you guys are never going to have happiness. You're, you're going to always have issues. Communication is the number that. one shit. I, I was, I, but you know what? I, I don't know, man. I, I would say that yeah. maybe women women communicate in general more, but I don't think that I was about to say, yeah. I don't think I that agree. effective communication is 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 one gender or the other. I think that goes to your communication your ability, right? Yeah. Because right, yeah. yeah. Because here's the thing, man. Some, it was like I was saying about the financial literacy. Some motherfuckers don't know how to handle adult conversations because True. they have not had good experiences and or role models to to model that behavior after. I think we take for granted. I won't go too off the fucking path here, but I take for granted. I think we take for granted sometimes, and maybe you guys don't that. Though our parents and our upbringing wasn't perfect, it wasn't ideal, right? The different environments, our neighborhoods and the friends we had and, and the friends in those environments, our parents, they're good and bad. All of those things formulated and mixed up in a motherfucking pot. And it, it made us hip to the motherfucking game, for lack of a better term. It made us hip to the game. It made us understand how to deal with people, how to talk to people, how to interact with people. And we are successful today. And I'm not just talking about professionally. I'm talking about socially because of those skills mm-hmm. we develop. And so communication for us is not only an ability, right, or strength. It's an expectation. But there are motherfuckers in relationships, men and women together and, and, and kind of has, that either don't know how to communicate or don't really want to because they're uncomfortable doing that. And D, yeah. I'm telling you, boy, you hit it right on the nail because everyone knows that women talk more. Women talk, what, 20,000 words more than men do a day. I believe that that was a stat, right? So, yeah, they talk more. Uh, to your point, it doesn't make them more effective. A dick in their mouth. Please. However, they, if you, if they, I'm sure there's studies, because I remember reading one where uh, it says women on average have better listening skills, right? So the combination, I'm just telling you, this is what they said. So the combination of talking and, and actually listening because I, I know so I know I'm horrible at act listening skills. I'll tune you out in a second. The combination of the two may make women seem like they're more effective communicators, but I think there's more effective communication than just talking in volume and listening, right? I honestly think that to your point, it's a skill set. How you can convey something. Does it make sense? Yeah. Throw a good analogy in there. I always love analogies. I was gonna leave you to that. You the analogy king, or D probably the analogy yeah. king at this point. No, I thought I love a good dog. It's the only way they can relate it. It seems because the logic itself, when you lay it out, you know what you're right. You do have to throw one in. You do have to throw one in. Yeah, throw that analogy in. They're like, oh, okay. Nah, you silly hoe. You know what I'm <laughs> so break it down for them, dog. So you you throw feel like you feel like you need to you need to put it down to the most relatable level possible. For them oh, to should. capture what you're actually trying to say. He said it best. He said it best. You should. You have to communicate in a way that they're going to understand. Or that gotcha. if I go speak English to a bitch who speak uh, German, will she understand? No. No, it depends. She won't too. understand, vice versa. Germans speak English pretty quickly in primary school, so maybe there's a good possibility. But no, no, I, I know that was good, though. I know that was <laughs> <laughs> oh, like that. <laughs> Yeah, but I think y'all were right that women may communicate more, but men may communicate better, more effectively. You know, we don't, we just don't get any, we just don't get any props for it because women, because women, we don't talk in volume. But women are so yeah, emotional and yeah. they can't and let go. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay, Carl oh, Thomas, is. but listen, was, yeah, they. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Carl Thomas wherever you at, nigga. Those those three. <laughs> I think he's Muslim. Three hit. I think he's Muslim. Is he? Yeah, do they still do that? Loon with the jail. Loon came back Muslim. He went to jail. I thought I thought he came back a preacher. No, it was Mace. No, nah, that's that's Mace. A bunch of niggas. I think Shine Loon. came back a preacher too, didn't he? No, nah, he he Jewish though. I'm not gonna lie. He made the best I preacher with his up. voice. He made the best best preacher. I can listen to that. Man. <laughs> I hear you. That's what it is, fellas. Yes, I hear you, man. But that's what it is, lady. You follow these tips here. Um, and by tips, I mean stay away from men with these habits. And this is going to be hard. Good gracious, I can't. You got to keep your eyes open because we got to be realistic. This, you might have so, to share. You might have to share, but it, oh, be okay with that. Shit, man. Yeah, <laughs> okay I'm pretty. 
depending on how what your age is, give us a call, send us an email. We'll let you know. Yeah. You know <laughs> and, Listen. and if we're to be honest, if you're for what, what, what would you say, D? 40 and up? What about it? If you're 40 and up, you probably have to share a good man like this Ooh. to find a good but man. But you know what? No, I would go, I'm gonna tell you, I would go 30s. I'm gonna tell you why. Is that 40? Yo, dang, you I'm gonna tell dang, you why. 30. I'm gonna tell you, but I'm gonna tell you why. It's it's peaks and valleys, nigga. Peaks and valleys. Look at my hand. Yeah. Peaks and valleys. <laughs> Listen, because that 40 year old, either them just out the house, or about to be out the house soon. Yeah. That 30, yeah. that 35 year old, right she time. got to elementary and middle school. She need help. Yeah. That 40 yeah. something year old, she about to be an empty nester. She good, baby. Y'all ain't shit. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Last one before you go. How many of let's say the homeboys only exhibiting two of the bad habits out of the nine? Is that a good percentage? To say, you know what? Which I can one take a is risk. it? Which one is it? They got to it it matter. Which it's gonna vary from person to person. You can't pick yeah. it. You can't pick it. Depend yeah, the because person, the woman. Uh, for a crackhead, a n- meeting a man who's also a crackhead, that addiction issue is no problem. We can, that <laughs> we, can yeah, we, we can get rocks together, baby. You know what I'm so, <laughs> and, and there are some women who are so clingy. A clingy man would make them happy as shit. You know what I mean? You know what? So God damn, you are right. right. That are bad, but there are. You it know, matters which ones. Customized and depends on who you are. Yeah, the, and the, it matters because I don't think, and Jen, this is not a knock on you, but it is a yeah. knock on you. Go ahead, go ahead. You're okay with selfish women. Oh, you're okay on, with that. Man. You're okay with <laughs> that. You are. You are. I, I you never are. knew that to be possible, but then I witnessed it. You're okay with a selfish partner. Because I don't pleaser. think in the that, most respectful way, you're a pleaser. You're a pleaser. Yeah, you don't you're like it in theory. Pleaser. You don't want to say it out when you say it out loud, does it sound shitty, right? Like who wants to, to be that? But if think about it, Jen, Je, you're See, open. that's what you think. Every though. puzzle got you, a piece. You would think Every puzzle got a piece. You would think yeah. that someone would be complacent with that, but I'm I wasn't complacent with that. I was never complacent with that. It was never going to be complacent. But did, what is my tolerance level more than some people? For sure, for sure. So I'll agree with you on that one. No, I'll give, I agree 100%. For sure, for sure. So either way, right, man, well. quick shout out, quick shout out to uh, to everyone. Uh, shout out to all the brunches. We never said Happy New Year because this is the first one um, of the year. We So I want to say Happy New Year. Oh, it's yeah, late. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We done put the expiration date is way gone on this one, but we still going to say it anyway. Um, it's going to be a, a... Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, Jesus. I mean that that was hey I got a question that. real quick. Do yeah. we need to have we can get a Google number? I'm thinking, dog, do we need to be able to get some live Not advice? Long. I feel like we need to be able to get some advice person to person. Yeah, that'd be fun. Some fucking advice, yeah, man. Be, you okay. you want to talk, you want to talk to a motherfucker that's gonna give you game that don't have nothing in the fight, no dog in the fight, just some genuine yeah. information. I think we need to be able to just open up lines from but seven Google to eight. Number. Yeah, we establish a Google number. Yeah, yeah. open up lines seven to eight just to take random um questions that man that's a good idea so i'll i'll look into that but um this year i think we're gonna it's gonna be all about quality of our our guests um and we're traveling too yeah we're traveling. A, we traveling so and it's gonna be more men on this podcast too to get get back to some of the perspective from men sausage well. fights well man. maybe not that my bro <laughs> But yeah, we're gonna stay away from those. You can see us on YouTube, Huge Presence, Instagram at Brunch with Boys, on Twitter at Brunch underscore Boys with a Z, TikTok, Brunch with the Boys as well. So you can find us on all platforms. Uh, and uh, hey, don't forget our website, www.brunchwiththeboys.com. One quick thing before we go, and we've all said one quick thing, so I love that we did that. Last tip, ladies. Never marry a nigga. Oh my God, this is so important. I don't know how I forgot about this. Never marry a nigga who doesn't make you come before he comes. That's selfish. That nigga consistently buses first. 